Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Walter Proper, the Executive Director for the International Association of Public Health Logisticians, and we're continuing our Chapter Leader Spotlight Series. And today we're uh, talking to Tariq in Pakistan. And so hello, Tariq, and maybe you can introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Walter. It's a pleasure to be associated again. And um, yeah, I think, uh, as you kindly said, I'm from Pakistan. I'm country director for Global Health Supply Chain Procurement and Supply Management program of the um, US government here. Uh, it's managed by Kimonics International. We are, uh, you know, after deliver weaning off in in June 2016, Kimonics started taking up the follow-on, and uh, it's an extensive work that we are doing on on um, supply chain. Uh, I have a team of about you know 55 people around the country. We are working on um, a number of supply chains actually. We started with family planning, we got into MNCA supply chains, and now we are into some bioscientific supply chains where uh, critical supply equipment, for example, ventilators, GIS systems, COVID-19 vaccines, you know, preparedness, uh, and inventory management system, and also. Uh, the personal protection equipment, uh, LMIS, that looks after a multilateral understanding in Pakistan. So it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a mix of uh, exciting work that we are undertaking on behalf of US government, USAID, uh, for the last, I would say, one year. Uh, not only that, it has been a challenging time in terms of uh, a new enemy, uh, you know, from a uh, from, uh, you know, virology perspective, but I think it's also a blessing in disguise where countries like Pakistan are now uh, kicking off with um, a better understanding as to how we need to advance ourselves into biosafety level three or four labs, you know, where there's a, there should be more research and development work, more partnership, no, no country can, you know, fight this alone. So um, I think uh, uh, my team is very excited, <laughs> honestly, and given the fact that, uh, we started with, you know, uh, planning supply chain. We got the system. I know, uh, GSI and then Chemonix, the USAID flagship supply chain program, global contracts. Uh, it's it's quite an exciting work, uh, uh, Walter. So uh, that's great. And and in terms of where in terms of just you, where where do you actually come from in Pakistan? Um, I was born, raised, and educated in Lahore, which is basically, you know, the uh, I would say uh, provincial capital of Punjab province, the largest province of Pakistan. And uh, I did my graduation, you know, I did my medicine a um, long time back. <laughs> and then I got my, you know, demography um, and population studies diploma. Uh, my interest was not much of a clinical side. I have been doing, you know, um, a lot of clinical work in terms of, you know, cardiology and critical care in my early days, you know, um, but then I thought, you know, I have to do something more uh, massive in terms of a larger benefit to the community and people. So I switched myself from, from clinical life to public health and I got into, did my MPH from University of Washington. I feel very blessed uh, to be part of the North American education system where I learned a lot in terms of what international work gets foundation and other are doing and the university itself was quite, uh, I think it sparked um, brand new activism in me <laughs> mm. in terms of governance and accountability and social justice. Um, you know, uh, some of my professors uh, fond memories that I have with Ann Downer and Steve Lloyd um, Clinton Foundation. Uh, yeah, so, mm. um, so I came back in 2000, um, I've been working with PSI I've been working with FHI on HIV AIDS for quite some time. With PSI, I've been doing social marketing in Pakistan. Um, then with GSI, of course, you know, I've been managing, uh, you know, one of the largest uh, supply chain investment in Pakistan for almost seven to eight years. And then uh, with Chemonics now, I'm looking after another uh, biggest portfolio of about, you know, $10.4 billion around the world. Uh, but in Pakistan, we are about, you know, 20, $22 million looking after supply chain, uh, you know, uh, systems, uh, human capacity, technology. Um, yeah, so uh, that's a small background. Um, Tariq, we, so you're one of, you know, again, one of the few, the doctors who moved into supply chain, medical doctors who are now in supply chain. So I guess, and you've mentioned it somewhat, but 
if you were to say, what is, what do you like most about working in, in health supply chain? I think, you know, uh, you know, I have been, uh, I say this, you know, very much, um, you know, time and again, within the stakeholder environment that we have, you know, uh, you know, within political corridors or bureaucracy and technocracy of Pakistan, that if commodities are not there in the system, nothing works actually. So until and unless, you know, public policy is not connected uh, with products to people, it doesn't make any difference to the lives of the people. So supply chain management, I believe, is the, is the foundation of health systems because investing anything in the system does not mean anything to people and communities until uh, you know, health service delivery system, technology connect people with uh, products whereby they can improve their health, they can prevent you know, different uh, you know, um, uh, problems. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, more than any uh, building block of the WHO, the six building blocks we talk about, uh, the supply chain is the most important backbone. Uh, uh, and I think it's, it, it is the backbone that actually defines uh, the delivery of the health system. And also I think there's a greater realization even among uh, multilateral partners like you know, Gavi Alliance and Global Fund, uh, and of course, Gates Foundation and UCID. Um, I think UCID has been leader in terms of creating an appetite for supply chain management and now a multilateral environment, including WHO, UNICEF are putting a lot of more attention as compared to past times on supply chain management. Okay, so, and then uh, back to IPHL. So how long have you been with IPHL? Uh, yeah, since 2009, uh, Walter. It has been a long time, you know, so yeah. Uh, and I think this experience is a great experience. You know, we, uh, I know, you know, some of the many, you know, I mean, conferences where we have been participating uh, and, you know, um, as a platform that actually looks after the interest of, you know, supply chain and logistics, you know, experts around the world, um, creating more discussion, doing advocacy work, uh, I think contributing to new data sets. And I think most importantly, you know, north to south and south to south collaborations, actually. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's a fundamental ingredient where we tend to create a, a body um, of knowledge where, um, Everybody, uh, you know, whether on the scale of one or ten, you you find yourself at one or ten, you benefit from each other, you know, um, and 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 look in a global community environment. And uh, yeah, I think from there, uh, I think it's a lot of advantage in terms of technical understanding that people take advantage of, and connecting with different other organizations. Many organizations have benefited being part of the HPL, not only just individual, you know, group of uh, people. And then the country chapter itself, you know, we started our country chapter back um, in 2019, I would say, and um, August. Uh, it is, uh, it has been a slow journey, as you know, you know, that uh, despite the fact that we are investing a lot on supply chain, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a greater realization, but um, I think there's, there is more time required in terms of having more maturity uh, and uh, grouping of these individuals on a platform. So we're working hard on this and we have about, you know, I think 42 or 50 people, uh, part of the chapter from Pakistan. But now I have said to my team that, you know, any training that we will be imparting on supply chain management, you know, like uh, the seven or eight elements, the fundamentals of supply chain, forecasting, quantification, you know, transportation, uh, you know, um, uh, warehousing, distribution, uh, and uh, information technology and LMIs and all those, you know, uh, elements, procurement. Whenever we do, we will try to engage all those people benefiting from those training and be part of the HPL Pakistan chapter. That's great. And, and your current role in the chapter is what? Uh, at this point in time, you know, Kimonics is looking after the secretariat. Uh, we are the secretariat of IHPL in Pakistan. I think uh, uh, we are, we introduced this, you know, back uh, in 2019. And now we are nurturing this, you know, uh, expanding this um, with a more critical mass of logisticians and supply chain experts. And uh, uh, yeah, that's where we are. And in terms of having discussions, I mean, if your chapter is moving to that, what do you think is, you know, sort of the most interesting topic that you've already discussed or you want to discuss as a chapter? 
I think it has been a great uh, journey of incremental interest that we have been finding out, you know, in the communities, uh, you know, health system uh, related, you know, folks and colleagues in Pakistan. Uh, for example, you know, when people were not knowing what is logistics modeling, that was very exciting news. Oh, what does it mean, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So the first time we did, you know, uh, for example, casting quantification for contraceptive, uh, organizations like Population Council and others have been actually, you know, basing their, you know, uh, data on demographic, you know, uh, forecasting. So by the time we came in, uh, this, you know, concept of logistics uh, modeling was great, whereby you are not only, uh, you know, taking care of the commercial, you know, supply chain data, uh, but also demographics and, you know, uh, I would say a hybrid approach of logistics data, procurement data, and of course other. So this th that was very interesting. And now I see uh, people are more interested in 10 years of time in machine learning, you know. Yeah. They want to see how you can actually, you know, do uh, stock management within five kilometers of radius where you have GIS information and ELMIS data where you are finding some facilities understocked, overstocked, and stock out. So that machine learning and, uh, you know, artificial intelligence that we have actually created within Pakistan LMIS is now creating more appetite, appetite to use data and uh, not only for uh, routine decision making and uh, real time data use, but also, uh, you know, um, writing papers and articles in terms of creating more knowledge on the, on the supply chain side of the health system. So I guess as my last question, what would you want people to know about where the IAPHL um, Pakistan chapter is or going? I would say, I think uh, a couple of things I would say, I think one that uh, I would accept it that we have been slow, we need to be fast, right? In terms of, you know, expansion, uh, expansion of the critical mass of the IHPL Pakistan chapter. And, uh, but we are on very good footings actually, footings I would say, uh, for the reason that, uh, you know, during the last uh, uh, one and a half year, we have been able to, you know, bring these people on board, but we have almost, you know, 11,000 people who have been trained in one or the other way on supply chain. So I think we need to bring them on board yeah, and yeah. Uh, create that interest of moving forward. And I think also, uh, more partnerships, ISPL can actually leverage uh, discussions in Pakistan, and uh, especially with the bioscientific, this you know new challenge of COVID-19, uh, I think it it presents you a great opportunity where people uh, can enhance their knowledge, can contribute to new knowledge, and you know prepare young leaders to be you know, uh, the future leaders on supply chain management in the days to come and years to come. Some interesting topics. I think we might be calling you for a webinar. So as you know, we keep trying to put out our webinars. So that would make a very interesting uh, new webinar. Okay, thank you very much, Tariq, for your time. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And again, we will continue with our Spotlight series and we continue to hope to put out at least two interviews a month. Thank you very much, Tariq. Thank you very much, Walter. It's a pleasure to be connected again, and uh, I wish you all the best in US. I know it's a difficult time, but hopefully you will get out of it. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you very much.